Hello and welcome back to the Inspired Composites YouTube channel. Today I'm going to continue where I left off from my last video which was techniques on how to split a large 3D object in order to be able to machine it on a 3 axis CNC. Last video was about layering due to a limited Z axis height. This video is going to be about how to split long and wide objects where your X and Y axis don't accommodate. This is pretty easy to understand. We're using basic tools here. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I have a, uh, a 3D model of a hood. And this is actually the hood from the kit car that I'm designing. And let's just assume the height of this hood is eight inches. So for now, we're just going to assume that our Z axis will be able to cut this whole thing with an eight inch Z axis. However, if we check the width and the length, we got about 62 and 68. So if we're using a CNC machine, a standard one that has a cutting envelope of 48 inches by 48 inches, 48 by 48. So this is our cutting envelope and obviously our hood is way too big. So what we can say is that maybe this hood will have to be divided into four different sections and each section would be machined out individually. And then after we machine out all four pieces, uh, we can adhere them together. So let's go ahead and split this hood up. But we're not just going to draw a line and split it because if you want your plugs to connect together and have some strength to it without uh, breaking at the seams, then you want to do it this way. You want to be able to use a jigsaw pattern. So we're going to create our own jigsaw pattern and it's just going to be very simple. It's going to be, we're going to go, um, Let's go with four inches and then six inches down. We also should hit the corners with a fillet tool. So let's fillet it because our router bit isn't going to be able to exactly cut that corner that sharp. So we got to always fill it our jigsaw pattern and because I'm using a half inch end mill so this half inch fillet should work fine let's move our jigsaw into place just position it and we also need to copy and paste this and position it across this way that should work. I think that'll work for us. So now that we have our pattern uh, laid out, we can see that obviously is each section is going to fit within our cutting envelope. So let's go ahead and split it. Now that the part is split up in four pieces, we can group each piece and remove them from one another. Um, before we do that, uh, I suggest you take the jigsaw pattern and make sure that for every section you move out that you have a jigsaw pattern to bring with it. Because that's important because once you create the cam software, you can use the jigsaw pattern as a profile line to cut out the part. Uh, let's see.
we have our profile of the part that we created. Once we start creating our cam software and our cutting pattern, uh, we're gonna use this profile to cut out the part. So now that we have that, let's keep removing these parts from each other. We only need one of those, one of those. Then this part, one and one. So we have our four parts, right? What's next is pretty much just to save them individually. In Rhino, you can select the part and go to file and select export selected and you can save that individual part. Uh, one thing to note is that from that front view, um, don't change anything in terms of what the height will be because once you start moving it up and down, uh, they won't they won't line up. Because obviously if you move this up, this isn't gonna line up with that. Look at that, right? And that's how I cut longer and wider parts to be able to cut using my three axis CNC machine. For part three, uh, we're going to combine both techniques. The first technique that I showed you, which is layering with a limited Z axis height. And for cutting wide and longer objects, with both of these techniques, we can pretty much cut anything in any size. And in part three, I'll show you using a very large object and how I split it in multiple pieces, probably about mm, eight to 10, maybe sometimes even up to 20 pieces, depending on how large it is and how what size our CNC machine is. I hope you learned a few things in this technique tutorial and part three will come out soon. Um, so watch out for that. See you guys next time.